Hello, grade five. Today we'll be talking about lesson 14, James Fortin. Objectives, unlock vocabulary words based on context and use them in sentences. Recognize the genre biography and sequence events in a narrative. And last, demonstrate reading fluency and comprehension skills. So let's begin with vocabulary and context. Number one is provisions. Colonial dock workers unloaded needed goods or provisions from newly arrived ships in port. So for everyone's background information, we're talking about uh, people who work in docks or in seaports during the time of colonial America. Okay, so what is the meaning of provisions? You have a clue right here in the sentence. Needed goods. Okay, so goods would also mean food and supplies that help you survive. So you call them provisions. Number two is dexterity. With dexterity or skilled hands, the silversmith makes beautiful bows. So just look at the how very dexterous his hands are. Okay, so dexterity means skilled hands, okay, or in other words, flexibility and skillful movement. That, of course, certain people, such as those making arts and crafts, would possess. Number three, we have aspects. Making frames and weaving fibers or aspects or parts of basket making. So we already have a clue inside the sentence. We have parts, okay, which mean the same as aspects. Another meaning for aspects would be different views that show the parts of a whole, like in fraction in mathematics, okay? You have different aspects that come together to form a whole. Number four is apprentice. An apprentice to a blacksmith was trained to make horseshoes and nails. So our clue in this sentence would be someone who was trained, okay, like a student, right? So an apprentice is someone who works with a master craftsman to learn a trade, okay? Although apprentice can come from all walks of life. Like, for example, the apprentice to a teacher is a student. So basically, an apprentice is someone who is trained to do certain things. Number five, we have influential. Printers made books and newspapers that were influential in events before the revolution. So we can take the root word of influential to be influence, okay? To influence someone is to persuade or convince someone, right? So we can be convinced by people or by print media, such as books and newspapers. So influential might mean having the power to make other people do things or to make people think about things a certain way. Next, we go to number six, contributions. Harvesting crops was one of many important contributions that kids made to the family farm. So contributions would come from the root word contribute. To contribute is to give something, right? To give something of consequence or importance. So contributions would mean improvements or aids toward bringing something about. Basically, when you contribute, you help. Number seven is persuade. A sign hanging above the door was used to persuade customers to enter the shoe shop. So this is the same case when you visit a mall. Very colorful signs are convincing you to visit and to shop. So the meaning of persuade, as in the persuasive writing we have done in a previous week, would be to convince someone to do something. Next we go to number eight, authorities. Judges were the highest authorities or officials who could settle legal disputes, okay, or conflicts of legal, lawful matters. Okay, so we have the clue right here in the sentence. Authorities can also be called officials, meaning they hold the highest positions in the office or in society. So authorities would mean people such as government officials who have the power to enforce laws or command obedience from the citizens. Number nine is bondage. Enslaved people who were held in bondage were often servants in the homes of the rich. So this was particularly true during the early days of the now United States, okay, especially in the colonial uh, America. Okay, so the African American people were forced to work as bondsmen or thralls men, okay? So they were enslaved. That's your clue in the sentence. 
So bondage would mean bound to work against your will in slavery. So when you work as a slave, you don't get paid. And this was one of the darkest uh, moments in the history of the African Americans. Number 10 is tentative. These merchants are shaking hands over a tentative deal. A contract will make it permanent. Okay, so we could say that the word permanent, okay, is the opposite or the antonym of the word tentative. So tentative in this sentence would mean uncertain, okay, or temporary, unless there is a signed contract on paper, then the shaking of hands would not actually close or seal the deal. Let's proceed to our target skill. So for lesson 14, we're going to study about sequence of events, which is one of the easiest reading skills there is, okay? The events in James 4 then are described in chronological order. When you say chronological order, it means time order. So as you read the selection, notice how this sequence of events is signaled by the use of dates, okay? Because we're going to uh, read about the, the biography of James Fortin, so it's the, about the life of a real person that existed before the colonial America. And references to James's age and words like after, soon, and later, which we call, yes, transitional devices. Now use a graphic organizer like this one. So this is a flowchart. Okay, that would help you organize the different events in the life of James Fortin. So you might think that this is quite easy, but then be careful because his biography jumps from one event to the other. So you have to be keen in terms of looking at the dates and looking at implicitly stated order of events. As mentioned, the genre of James Fortin is biography. So what's biography? A biography tells about a person's life, but it is written by another person. So as you read, you have to look for events in time order and information about what the person accomplished and why he or she is important. Okay, so the thing about biography is first you have to have uh, made a contribution to society. Okay, you have to be a well-known person who has changed society in a certain way for your biography to be written or for you to be worthy to have a biography written for you. Okay, so now we can check out these inspiring multicultural biographies for kids, that of Martin Luther King Jr., for example, Barack Obama, and Nelson Mandela. So we have lots of others. Just type in biography for kids and different titles will appear for you. Now, this is our story title, James Fortin, From Now Is Your Time. Author is Walter Dean Myers, and the selection was illustrated by Stephen Noble. Essential questions, what events or feelings would lead someone to fight for freedom? So you can pause this video to think about your answer and to prepare for a writing activity we're going to have in class that would answer this essential question. Now let's read the summary of the story. The entire story would be available or accessible in e-resources in the IS portal. And also I will be sending you a link of the Read Aloud, which we always uh, listen to, okay? And uh, that's accessible also in the YouTube channel uh, that I will be providing for uh, each one of you. So James Fortin was born in 1766, 10 years before the American Revolution began. His father, Thomas, was a free African who worked as a sailmaker. Thomas and his wife wanted to give James a good education. Then James's father died. His mother still wanted him in school, but James wanted to go to sea. He had seen American soldiers in the streets of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he wanted to join the fight for freedom. Fortin signed on with a fighting ship called the Royal Louis. He carried gunpowder to the guns on the deck. Their first battle at sea ended in victory. The British ship surrendered and the crew was taken by the American authorities. Many men were injured in the battle. The Royal Louis gathered fresh provisions and set out again. This time, the ship was involved in a conflict with three British ships and surrendered. The crew was taken as prisoners. Fortin was afraid. 
He knew that captured Africans were often sold as slaves. Fortunately, he became friends with the captain's son. The boy may have tried to persuade his father not to sell Fortin. Several events led to or lead to Fortin's success later in life. First, the war ended while Fortin was on the prison ship and the crew was rescued. Then Fortin worked as an apprentice to a sailmaker. Next, he became owner of the business and made many contributions to the sailmaking industry. Finally, Fortin became a very influential person in the fight against slavery. So now, based on the life of James Fortin, you have pretty much a good idea about, you know, the events in life that would lead you to fight for your freedom. So he started out as the son of a free African, but he wanted to go to sea and he wanted to make a name for himself. He wanted to craft his own destiny, right? So he was involved in a conflict against the British Army. He was the caretaker of gunpowder, okay? But then, of course, life has changed for him, and then he became an apprentice to a sailmaker after the war and had made contributions to sailmaking industry. So that is the life of James Fortin. So you can check out more by reading your Journey's 2017 student book in e-resources, RMB, and other resources by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.